Okay, that makes sense. So you're mentioning the Llama CPP. What is that project specifically? Yeah, so Llama CPP is 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 kind of like an inferencing engine. So it has an underlying library called GGML. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the low le- very low level um cross to the hardware um AI library, mm-hmm. let's just call it that. ML is for machine learning. Mm-hmm. And Llama CPP builds on top of that. Uh, uh, and it's kind of focused on chatbots. Mm. But actually that that's changing. That's kind of no longer true because now they're adding multimodal support, mm-hmm. which takes in all all sorts of other kind of inputs like images or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the funny thing about Llama CPP. Like it was initially written to run Llama model from Facebook. Now it runs every single model, but you know, mm-hmm. projects grow and evolve. Um, and going back to my point, it is a really technical tool. So. Often, a lot of people use it like a library. Mm. Uh, Docker Model Runner would kind of be one of those. Endo Llama would be one of those, actually, uh, mm. at least in the past. And there's a bit of a story there. But um, I kind of see it as kind of like the Meza for AI. It's kind of mm. like this low-level library that everyone goes to for AI. And it also has all those GPU backends integrated, like Vulkan, Rockham, CUDA, there's another one called Musa, OpenCL. There's a lot. But yeah. So that's sort of the the low level library that everyone builds on, and then sort of you bring in the, the the tools that build on top of that will pick and choose which functionality they want to provide within their tool. But I guess kind of in a similar way in the video editing space to something like an FFmpeg, where all like pretty much every Linux video editor, every Linux video player, for example, is basically just a wrapper around FFmpeg at its core for the most part. Yeah, no, that's pretty accurate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, obviously, I'm sure there's there's things that are added onto that, and I, that's definitely important to talk about here. So, what uh, one of the things that you did want to talk about is when Docker Model Runner first came out, there was. Well, there was the state it was in at the time, and I guess a lot of those opinions have kind of held on about what it's like and what is currently present within the project. So I don't know where you want to take this and what you want to focus on first, but I guess we can get into that. Yeah, no, this is this is um, one of the reasons I wanted to speak with you. Um mm-hmm. We're kind of doing sort of, let's call it a relaunch of Docker Model Runner at Mm -hmm. the moment, because um, when Docker Model Runner was first released, um, they were kind of racing to get something out because they had all the ideas and they kind of just strung it together with paper clips and whatnot just to to get it out there. Uh, So when they initially released it, it was beta. It was only available on... Docker Desktop, which is a proprietary tool. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's kind of half half. It's it's about eighty percent open source code and twenty percent proprietary. But anyway, mm-hmm. it was beta, and it was very limited in um, hardware support. It mm-hmm. only worked on like Apple devices and in Nvidia hardware. It didn't have things like Vulkan to support every GPU in the world, basically, and mm-hmm. and all sorts of things like this. So that was a couple of months ago. Actually, it became fully open source only like a month after that. But I, I, I don't. I think we could have communicated that better. Mm. But now we're kind of re- trying to reboot and relaunch the community. So we went GA like a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We've been cleaning up the GitHub repo to make it more contributor f- friendly. We upstreamed all the patches to to Lama CPP. Mm-hmm. Um, we enabled um, lots more hardware. Tomorrow, Vulkan support is coming out. So, that, yeah, that's Vulkan's really nice because, yeah, you throw any integrated GPU at it or AMD or whatever, and, and it works with relatively little configuration or whatever. So, I suppose we're trying to relaunch with a more open centric attitude and, uh, you know, to try and build a community and really make it an open source. Uh, project that people um feel welcome to contribute their ideas to i guess <laughs> so 
was it just like, you said it was sort of just like held together with paper clips initially it was just they wanted to get something out as quickly as possible was it what was the sort of environment like at the time and why was there this effort to rush it out as quickly as possible um that's a good question and i'm actually probably not the best person to answer that because i wasn't part of the team at the time fair enough um yeah. But what I've gathered from the team is they felt there was a lot of kind of tools operating in this space. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they felt like they had to get out there quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing was like just to gather some initial feedback. So they wanted to like do the bare minimal, mm -hmm. minimum, even even if it necessarily didn't have all the features and, it, you know, it, it wasn't fully ironed out. Just get feedback from the community on places like Reddit or whatever. Mm -hmm. and and work from there i think that was the idea okay okay so what is i guess what is the state of it now if someone wants to go and install it today and try it out what are they going to be presented with so yeah there's there's two ways of installing it you can install docker desktop mm -hmm. um which as i said earlier that's kind of a product a proprietary tool but um it's free for personal use so that's one way mm -hmm. the other way of installing it there's something called docker engine mm -hmm. uh, which is like the command line version that's fully open source sometimes people call it docker community edition mm. so that's another popular way of installing it i actually install it both ways depending on my machine <laughs> but uh yeah you're kind of you're presented with a docker like um cli syntax that people would be very familiar with mm -hmm. so like to run say gemma 3 from google it's literally docker model runner um ai slash gemma 3 docker model push docker model pull docker model inspect docker model list to list all the ai models you've downloaded into your local storage so it's it it's that kind of concept yeah mm -hmm. so if somebody is familiar with docker already it's basically just everything they already know yeah exactly mm -hmm. and and also because it runs um it runs an open ai compatible server mm -hmm. there are also a lot of uis that are getting popular mm -hmm. so you can connect it to things like anything llm mm -hmm. open web ui there's all these uis that you can connect and they sometimes give you a lot more functionality in terms of things like RAG. RAG is basically kind of like using AI with documents mm. to supplement its knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's that's another way of using it. And you, ju you just connect them together and that can be quite useful. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the open AI server there. It's I guess that's just the standard because they kind of you know, they're like the big name early on. They kind of got to set the standard because they were the they were the standard at the time. And there's a lot of tools that were built then sort of targeting what they were doing. So you kind of have to work around the, the standard that's effectively developed there. Yeah, yeah. This, this goes back to the... Yeah, you're exactly right. This goes back to the point of... Um, we were talking about the standard for the file format for models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ChatGPT got popular and people were like, I guess that's the standard now. And that's the way things are kind of going in AI. It's moving so fast and something just gets popular and people are like, let's just go with that. Mm -hmm. 